Donald Fauntleroy Duck is a cartoon character created by the Walt Disney Company. Donald is an anthropomorphic white duck with a yellow-orange bill, legs, and feet. He typically wears a sailor shirt and cap with a bow tie. Donald is known for his semi-intelligible speech and his mischievous, temperamental, and pompous personality. Along with his friend Mickey Mouse, Donald was included in TV Guide's list of the 50 greatest cartoon characters of all time in 2002, and has earned a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He has appeared in more films than any other Disney character, and is the most published comic book character in the world outside of the superhero genre. Donald Duck appeared in comedic roles and animated cartoons. Donald's first theatrical appearance was in The Wise Little Hen, but it was his second appearance in Orphan's Benefit that same year that introduced him as a temperamental comic foil to Mickey Mouse. Throughout the next two decades, Donald appeared in over 150 theatrical films, several of which were recognized at the Academy Awards. In the 1930s, he typically appeared as part of a comic trio with Mickey and Goofy and was given his own film series starting with Don Donald. These films introduced Donald's love interest and permanent girlfriend Daisy Duck and often included his three nephews Huey, Dewey, and Louie. After the film Chips Ahoy, Donald appeared primarily in educational films before eventually returning to theatrical animation in Mickey's Christmas Carol. His last appearance in a theatrical film was in Fantasia 2000. However, since then Donald has appeared in direct-to-video features such as Mickey, Donald, Goofy, The Three Musketeers, television series such as Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, and video games such as Quackshot. In addition to animation, Donald is well-known worldwide for his appearances in comics. Donald was most famously drawn by Al Taliaferro, Carl Barks, and Don Rosa. Barks, in particular, is credited for greatly expanding the Donald Duck universe, the world in which Donald lives, and creating many additional characters such as Donald's rich uncle Scrooge McDuck. Donald has been a popular character in Europe, particularly in Nordic countries where his weekly magazine Donald Duck & Co. was the comics publication with the highest circulation from the 1950s to 2009. In Italy, Donald is a major character in many comics, including a juvenile version named Paperino Paperotto, and a superhero alter ego known as Paperinic. Characteristics voice The character is known for possessing an only partly intelligible voice, developed by Donald's original performer, Clarence Nash. The voice actor produces sounds by forcing air through the mouth using the muscles of the cheek, rather than from the lungs as in typical speech. Nash reputedly originally developed the voice as that of a nervous baby goat, before Walt Disney interpreted it as sounding like a duck. Personality Donald's two dominant personality traits are his fiery temper and his upbeat attitude to life. Many Donald shorts start with Donald in a happy mood, without a care in the world until something comes along and spoils his day. His rage is a great cause of suffering in his life. On multiple occasions, it has caused him to get in over his head and lose competitions. There are times when he fights to keep his temper in check, and he sometimes succeeds in doing so temporarily, but he always returns to his normal angry self in the end. Donald's aggressive nature has its advantages, however. While at times it is a hindrance, and even a handicap, it has also helped him in times of need. When faced with a threat of some kind, for example, Pete's attempts to intimidate him, he is initially scared, but his fear is replaced by anger. As a result, instead of running away, he fights. In fact, his anger can make him powerful enough to defeat ghosts, much stronger individuals, sharks, mountain goats, giant kites, and even the forces of nature. Donald is something of a prankster, and as a result, he can sometimes come across as a bit of a bully, especially in the way he sometimes treats Chip and Dale and Huey, Dewey and Louie, his nephews. As the animator Fred Spencer has put it, the duck gets a big kick out of imposing on other people or annoying them, but he immediately loses his temper when the tables are turned. In other words, he can dish it out, but he can't take it. However, with a few exceptions, there is seldom any harm in Donald's pranks. He almost never intends to hurt anyone, and when his pranks go too far, he is often apologetic. In Truant Officer Donald, for example, when he is tricked into believing he has accidentally killed Huey, Dewey, and Louie, he shows great regret, blaming himself. His nephews appear in the form of angels, and he willingly endures a kick by one of them, that is, of course, until he realizes he has been tricked, whereupon he promptly loses his temper. Donald is also a bit of a poseur. He likes to brag, especially about how skilled he is at something. He does, in fact, have many skills, he is something of a jack of all trades. Amongst other things, he is a talented fisher and a competent hockey player. However, his love of bragging often leads him to overestimate his abilities, so that when he sets out to make good on his boasts, he gets in over his head, usually to hilarious effect. Another of his personality traits is perseverance. Even though he can at times be a slacker, and likes to say that his favorite place to be is in a hammock, once he has committed to accomplishing something he goes for it 100%, sometimes resorting to extreme measures to reach his goal. Phrases Donald has a few memorable phrases that he occasionally comes out with in certain situations. For example, when he stumbles across other characters in the midst of planning some sort of retaliation or prank, or when things do not go as he had planned or do not work properly, he often says, what's the big idea? 
When he gives up on something he is trying to do, or something he hopes will happen, he tends to say, ah, phooey. When he confronts someone, something that is antagonizing or frustrating him, he tends to exclaim, so. He greets his girlfriend Daisy, and occasionally others, with, hiya, toots. And when he is very excited about something, he usually mutters, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, under his breath. Health there is a running gag in the Donald Duck comics about him being physically unhealthy and unmotivated to exercise. Usually, some character close to Donald annoys him by saying he is being lazy and needs to get some exercise. But despite his apparent idleness, Donald proves that he is muscular. In the short film, Sea Scouts, Donald is traveling with his nephews in a boat when it is attacked by a shark. Donald makes several attempts to defeat the shark, each of which proves ineffective, but then finally triumphs and defeats the shark with a single well-placed punch. Additionally, as discussed below Donald had a stint in the U.S. Army during World War II that culminated with him serving as a commando in the film Commando Duck, and he was frequently away serving in the U.S. Navy in the television cartoon series DuckTales. Friendly rivalry with Mickey Mouse throughout his appearances, Donald has shown that he is jealous of Mickey and wants his job as Disney's greatest star, similar to the rivalry between Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. In most Disney theatrical cartoons, Mickey and Donald are shown as friends and have little to no rivalry. However, by the time the Mickey Mouse Club aired on television, it was shown that Donald always wanted the spotlight. One animated short that rivaled the Mickey Mouse March song showed Huey, Dewey, and Louie as Boy Scouts and Donald as their scoutmaster at a cliff near a remote forest and Donald leads them in a song mirroring the Mouseketeers theme, D-O-N-A-L-D-D-U-C-K. Donald Duck. The rivalry has caused Donald some problems, for example in a 1988 TV special, where Mickey is cursed by a sorcerer to become unnoticed, the world believes Mickey to be kidnapped. Donald Duck is then arrested for the kidnapping of Mickey, as he is considered to be the chief suspect, due to their feud. However, Donald did later get the charges dismissed, due to lack of evidence. Walt Disney, in his wonderful world of color, would sometimes make reference to the rivalry. Walt, one time, had presented Donald with a gigantic birthday cake and commented how it was, even bigger than Mickey's, which pleased Donald. The clip was rebroadcast in November 1984 during a TV special honoring Donald's 50th birthday, with Dick Van Dyke substituting for Walt. The rivalry between Mickey and Donald was shown in the 2001-2003 television series Disney's House of Mouse. It was shown that Donald wanted to be the club's founder and wanted to change the name from House of Mouse to House of Duck, which is obvious in the episodes, The Stolen Cartoons, and, Timon and Pumbaa. In the episode, Everybody Loves Mickey, Donald's jealousy is explored and even joins sides with Mortimer Mouse. However, Donald has a change of heart when Daisy reminds Donald how Mickey has always been there to support him. Since then, Donald accepted that Mickey was the founder and worked with Mickey as a partner to make the club profitable and successful. Enemies Donald has numerous enemies, who range from comical foil to annoying nemesis, Chip, and Dale, Pete, Humphrey the Bear, Spike the Bee, Mountain Lion Louie, Boodle Beetle, Witch Hazel, Araquan Bird and Baby Shelby. During the Second World War, Donald was often set against Adolf Hitler. In the comics, he is often harassed or on the run from the Beagle Boys, Magicka Dispel, Gladstone Gander and Mr. Jones. In the video game Donald Duck, Go and Quackers, he saves Daisy from Murloc. The Italian-produced comic PKNA, Papernick New Adventures stars Donald Duck as Papernick, or Duck Avenger, in his battles against new alien enemies, Evronian Empire, founded by Emperor Evron. Origin voice performer Clarence Nash auditioned for Walt Disney Studios when he learned that Disney was looking for people to create animal sounds for his cartoons. Disney was particularly impressed with Nash's duck imitation and chose him to voice the new character. Disney came up with Donald's iconic attributes including his short temper and his sailor suit. While Dick Humor and Art Babbitt were the first to animate Donald, Dick Lundy is credited for developing him as a character. On April 29, 1934, five days before The Wise Little Hen's first theatrical release, Bandleader Raymond Page performed the score to the cartoon on his California Melodies program for the Los Angeles AM radio station KHJ. The main vocals were performed by a trio, the Three Rhythm Kings. Clarence Nash and Florence Gill performed the character voices for this radio treatment, with Nash performing both Donald Duck and Peter Pig, making it the first time the public heard Nash's duck voice. Animation early development Donald Duck's first film appearance was in the 1934 cartoon The Wise Little Hen, which was part of the Silly Symphony series of theatrical cartoon shorts. The film's given release date of June 9 is officially recognized by the Walt Disney Company as Donald's birthday, though historian J.B. Kaufman, consultant of the Walt Disney Family Museum, discovered in recent years that The Wise Little Hen was first shown on May 3, 1934 at the Carthay Circle Theatre for a benefit program, while its official debut was on June 7 at the Radio City Music Hall. Donald's appearance in the cartoon, as created by animator Dick Lundy, is similar to his modern look. The feather and beak colors are the same, as are the blue sailor shirt and hat, but his features are more elongated, his body plumper, his feet smaller, and his sclerae white.
Donald's personality is not developed either, in the short, he only fills the role of the unhelpful friend from the original story. Bert Gillette brought Donald back in a 1934 Mickey Mouse cartoon, Orphan's Benefit. Donald is one of a number of characters who are giving performances in a benefit for Mickey's orphans. Donald's act is to recite the poems Mary had a little lamb and little boy blue, but every time he tries, the mischievous orphans heckle him, leading the duck to fly into a squawking fit of anger. This explosive personality would remain with Donald for decades to come. Donald continued to be a hit with audiences. The character began appearing regularly in most Mickey Mouse cartoons. Cartoons from this period, such as the cartoon The Band Concert, in which Donald repeatedly disrupts the Mickey Mouse Orchestra's rendition of the William Tell Overture by playing Turkey in the Straw, are regularly noted by critics as exemplary films and classics of animation. Animator Ben Sharpstein also created the classic Mickey, Donald, and Goofy comedy in 1935, with the cartoon Mickey Service Station. In 1936, Donald was redesigned to be a bit fuller, rounder, and cuter, beginning with the cartoon Moving Day. He also began starring in solo cartoons, the first of which was Ben Sharpstein's 1937 cartoon, Don Donald. This short also introduced a love interest of Donald's, Donna Duck, who evolved into Daisy Duck. Donald's nephews, Huey, Dewey and Louie, would make their first animated appearance a year later in the 1938 film, Donald's Nephews, directed by Jack King. By 1938, most polls showed that Donald was more popular than Mickey Mouse. Wartime during World War II, Donald appeared in several animated propaganda films, including the 1943 Der Führer's Face. In this cartoon, Donald plays a worker in an artillery factory in Nutsy Land. He struggles with long working hours, very small food rations, and having to salute every time he sees a picture of the Führer. These pictures appear in many places, such as on the assembly line in which he is screwing in the detonators of various sizes of shells. In the end, he becomes little more than a small part in a faceless machine with no choice but to obey until he falls, suffering a nervous breakdown. Then Donald wakes up to find that his experience was, in fact, a dream. At the end of the short, Donald looks to the Statue of Liberty and the American flag with renewed appreciation. Der Führer's Face won the 1942 Academy Award for Animated Short Film. Der Führer's Face was also the first of two animated short films to be set during the war to win an Oscar, the other being Tom and Jerry's short film, The Yankee Doodle Mouse. Other shorts from this period include a six-film miniseries that follows Donald's life in the U.S. Army from his drafting to his experiences in basic training under Sergeant Pete to his first actual mission as a commando having to sabotage a Japanese airbase. Titles in the series include Donald Gets Drafted The Vanishing Private Sky Trooper Fallout Fall in the Old Army Game Commando Duck Thanks in part to these films. Donald graced the nose artwork of virtually every type of World War II Allied combat aircraft, from the L-4 Grasshopper to the B-29 Superfortress. Donald also appears as a mascot, such as in the United States Army Air Force's 309th Fighter Squadron and the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary, which showed Donald as a fierce-looking pirate ready to defend the American coast from invaders. Donald also appeared as a mascot emblem for the 415th Fighter Squadron, 438th Fighter Squadron, 479th Bombardment Squadron, and 531st Bombardment Squadron. He also appeared as the mascot for the fire department at Marine Corps Air Station El Toro as well as the Army Air Force's 319 Aircraft Maintenance Unit at Luke Air Force Base where he is seen wearing an old-style pilot's uniform with a board with a nail in it in one hand, and a lightning bolt in the other hand. Donald's most famous appearance, however, was on the North American Aviation B-25B Mitchell medium bomber piloted by Lt. Ted W. Lawson of the 95th Bombardment Squadron, USAAF. The aircraft, named the Ruptured Duck, and carrying a picture of Donald's face above a pair of crossed crutches, was one of 16 B-25Bs which took off from the aircraft carrier USS Hornet to bomb Tokyo on April 18, 1942 during the Doolittle Raid. The mission was led by Lt. Col. Jimmy Doolittle. Like most of the aircraft that participated in the mission, the Ruptured Duck was unable to reach its assigned landing field in China following the raid and ended up ditching off the coast near Shangchou, China. The Ruptured Duck's pilot survived, with the loss of a leg and later wrote about the Doolittle Raid in the book, later to be the 1944 movie, 30 Seconds Over Tokyo. During World War II, Disney cartoons were not allowed to be imported into occupied Europe owing to their propagandistic content. Since this lost Disney revenue, he decided to create a new audience for his films in South America. He decided to make a trip through various Latin American countries with his assistants, and use their experiences and impressions to create two feature-length animation films. The first was Saludos Amigos, which consisted of four short segments, two of them with Donald Duck. In the first, he meets his parrot pal José Carioca. The second film was The Three Caballeros, in which he meets his rooster friend Panchito. Several decades after the war, on account of the fact that Donald was never officially separated from service in either his animated shorts or his comic strips, as part of Donald's 50th birthday celebrations during the 25th annual Torrance, California Armed Forces Day Parade, 
The U.S. Army retired Donald Duck from active duty as a «buck sergeant». Postwar many of Donald's films made after the war recast the duck as the brunt of some other character's pestering. Donald is seen repeatedly attacked, harassed, and ridiculed by his nephews, by the chipmunks Chip, and Dale, or by other characters such as Humphrey the Bear, Spike the Bee, Boodle Beetle, the Araquan Bird, Louie the Mountain Lion, or a colony of ants. In effect, much like Bugs Bunny cartoons from Warner Brothers. The Disney artists had reversed the classic screwball scenario perfected by Walter Lance and others in which the main character is the instigator of these harassing behaviors, rather than the butt of them. The post-war Donald also starred in educational films, such as Donald in Mathmagic Land and How to Have an Accident at Work, and made cameos in various Disney projects, such as The Reluctant Dragon and the Disneyland television show. For this latter show, Donald's uncles Ludwig von Drake and Scrooge McDuck were then created in animation. In Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Donald has a piano duel scene with his Warner Brothers counterpart Daffy Duck voiced by Mel Blanc. Donald has since appeared in several different television shows and animated movies. He played roles in The Prince and the Popper and made a cameo appearance in a goofy movie. Donald had a rather small part in the animated television series DuckTales. There, Donald joins the U.S. Navy and leaves his nephews Huey, Dewey, and Louie with their uncle Scrooge, who then has to take care of them. Donald's role in the overall series was fairly limited, as he only ended up appearing in a handful of episodes when home on leave. Some of the stories in the series were loosely based on the comics by Carl Barks. Donald made some cameo appearances in Bonkers, before getting his own television show Quack Pack. This series featured a modernized duck family. Donald was no longer wearing his sailor suit and hat, but a Hawaiian shirt. Huey, Dewey, and Louie now are teenagers, with distinct clothing, voices, and personalities. Daisy Duck has lost her pink dress and bow and has a new haircut. No other family members, besides Ludwig von Drake, appear in Quack Pack, and all other Duckburg citizens are humans and not dogs. He made a comeback as the star of the Noah's Ark segment of Fantasia 2000, as first mate to Noah. Donald musters the animals to the Ark and attempts to control them. He tragically believes that Daisy has been lost, while she believes the same of him, but they are reunited at the end. All this to Edward Elgar's pomp and circumstance marches one to four. In an alternate opening for the Disney film Chicken Little, Donald would have made a cameo appearance as Ducky Lucky. This scene can be found on the Chicken Little DVD. Donald also played an important role in Mickey Mouse Works and House of Mouse. In the latter show, he is the co-owner of Mickey's Nightclub. He is part of the ensemble cast of characters in the TV show Mickey Mouse Clubhouse as well. He also appears in the new three-minute Mickey Mouse TV shorts for Disney Channel. Donald also appears in the DuckTales reboot, in which he is a main character as opposed to his minor role in the original cartoon. The series depicts him as having once been Scrooge's partner in adventure along with his sister Della. However, ten years prior to the series beginning, Della went missing, leading to Donald and Scrooge going their separate ways and not speaking to each other throughout that time. In the present, Donald reluctantly brings Della's sons and his legal charges, the triplets, to Scrooge's mansion so he can babysit them while Donald attends a job interview, though he still has not forgiven Scrooge for their past history. Donald is temporarily hired by Scrooge's rival Flynnhart Glomgold and ends up at the city of Atlantis, where Scrooge has also brought the boys. After some initial conflict Scrooge offers to let them stay with him in his mansion. Donald owns a boat in the series, which is relocated to Scrooge's pool at the conclusion of the series premiere. Later in the series, it is revealed that Donald's anger is the result of a fear that no one can understand him, though with the help of an anger management counselor and while taking care of Huey, Dewey, Louie, he was able to channel it into protective instinct. Voice actors Donald's first voice was performed by Clarence Nash, who voiced him for 50 years. Nash voiced Donald for the last time in Mickey's Christmas Carol, making Donald the only character in the film to be voiced by his original voice actor. He did, however, continue to provide Donald's voice for commercials, promos, and other miscellaneous material until he died in 1985. Since Nash died, Donald's voice has been performed by Disney animator, Tony Anselmo, who was mentored by Nash for the role. Anselmo's first performance as Donald is heard in a 1986 DTV special, DTV Valentine on the Disney Channel, and in his first feature film, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, in 1988. Walt Disney insisted on character consistency and integrity. However there were instances in which other actors would voice Disney characters for various smaller films, recordings, theme parks and other projects. Accuracy and consistency became an issue. In 1988, Imagineer Les Perkins convinced Jeffrey Katzenberg and Roy E. Disney to approve the creation the Department of Disney Character Voices to ensure continuation of character integrity, consistency, and quality in recording methods. Roy named one official voice for all Walt Disney Legacy characters. Tony Anselmo was approved by Roy E. Disney as Disney's official voice of Donald Duck. For the TV series Mickey and the Roadster Racers, later named Mickey Mouse Mixed Up Adventures, Donald was voiced by voice actor Daniel Ross, while Anselmo continues as the official voice of Donald on all other Disney projects, 
DuckTales, Mickey Mouse Shorts, Legend of the Three Caballeros, Kingdom Hearts 3, Disney Parks, Attractions, and Consumer Products. Comics While Donald's cartoons continue to be shown in the United States and around the world, his weekly and monthly comic books enjoy their highest profile in many European countries, especially Italy, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Finland and Iceland, but also Germany, the Netherlands, and Greece. Most of them are produced and published by the Italian branch of the Walt Disney Company in Italy and by Egmont in Denmark, Norway, Finland and Sweden. In Germany, the comics are published by Ehapa which has since become part of the Egmont Empire. Donald comics have also been produced in the Netherlands and France. Donald also has been appeared in Japanese comics published by Kodansha and Tokyopop. According to the Indux, which is a database about Disney comics worldwide, American, Italian and Danish stories have been reprinted in the following countries. In most of them, publications still continue. Australia, Austria, Argentina, Belgium, Brazil, Bulgaria, Canada, China, Colombia, Croatia, Czech Republic, Denmark, Egypt, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Guyana, Hungary, Iceland, India, Indonesia, Israel, Italy, Japan, Latvia, Lithuania, Mexico, the Netherlands, Norway, Philippines, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Slovakia, Spain, Sweden, Thailand, Turkey, the United Kingdom, the United States, and the former Yugoslavia. Early development The character's first appearance in comic strip format was the 1934 Silly Symphony comic strip sequence based on the short The Wise Little Hen. For the next few years, Donald made a few more appearances in Disney-themed strips, and by 1936, he had grown to be one of the main characters in the Silly Symphony strip. Ted Osborne was the primary writer of these strips, with Al Taliaferro as his artist. Osborne and Taliaferro also introduced several members of Donald's supporting cast, including his nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. In 1937, an Italian publisher named Mondadori created the first Donald Duck story intended specifically for comic books. The 18-page story, written by Federico Pedrocchi, is the first to feature Donald as an adventurer rather than simply a comedic character. Fleetway in England also began publishing comic book stories featuring the duck. Developments under Talia Faro A daily Donald Duck comic strip drawn by Talia Faro and written by Bob Carp began running in the United States on February 2, 1938. The Sunday strip began the following year. Talia Faro and Carp created an even larger cast of characters for Donald's world. He got a new Saint Bernard named Bolivar, and his family grew to include cousin Gus Goose and grandmother Elvira Coot. Donald's new rival girlfriends were Donna and Daisy Duck. Talia Faro also gave Donald his very own automobile, a 1934 Belchfire runabout, in a 1938 story, which is often nicknamed by Donald's 313 carplate in the comic incarnation of Donald's world. Developments under Barks in 1942, Western Publishing began creating original comic book stories about Donald and other Disney characters. Bob Carp worked on the earliest of these, a story called, Donald Duck Finds Pirate Gold. The new publisher meant new illustrators, however, Carl Barks and Jack Hanna would later repeat the treasure hunting theme in many more stories. Barks soon took over the major development of the duck as both writer and illustrator. Under his pen, Donald became more adventurous, less temperamental and more eloquent. Pete was the only other major character from the Mickey Mouse comic strip to feature in Barks' new Donald Duck universe. Barks placed Donald in the city of Duckburg, creating a host of supporting players, including Neighbor Jones, Uncle Scrooge McDuck, Gladstone Gander, the Beagle Boys, Yero Gearloose, April, May and June, Flintheart Glomgold, Magica de Spell, and John D. Rockerduck. Many of Taliaferro's characters made the move to Barks' world as well, including Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Barks placed Donald in both domestic and adventure scenarios, and Uncle Scrooge became one of his favorite characters to pair up with Donald. Scrooge's profile increased, and by 1952, the character had a comic book of his own. At this point, Barks concentrated his major efforts on the Scrooge stories, and Donald's appearances became more focused on comedy or he was recast as Scrooge's helper, following his rich uncle around the globe. Further developments Dozens of writers continued to utilize Donald in their stories around the world. For example, the Disney studio artists, who made comics directly for the European market. Two of them, Dick Kinney and Al Hubbard created Donald's cousin Fethry Duck. The American artists Vic Lockman and Tony Strobel, who were working directly for the American comic books, created Moby Duck. Strobel was one of the most productive Disney artists of all time and drew many stories which Barks wrote and sketched after his retirement. In the 1990s and early 2000s, these scripts were redrawn in a style closer to Barks' own by Dutch artist Don Gips. Italian publisher Mondadori created many of the stories that were published throughout Europe. They also introduced numerous new characters who are today well known in Europe. One example is Donald Duck's alter ego, a superhero called Paperinik in Italian, 
created in 1969 by Guido Martina and Giovan Battista Carpi. Giorgio Cavazzano and Carlo Cendi created Umperio Bogarto, a detective whose name is an obvious parody on Humphrey Bogart. They also created OK Quack, an extraterrestrial duck who landed on Earth in a spaceship in the shape of a coin. He, however, lost his spaceship and befriended Scrooge, and now is allowed to search through his money bin time after time, looking for his ship. Romano Scarpa, who was a very important and influential Italian Disney artist, created Brigitta McBridge, a female duck who is madly in love with Scrooge. Her affections are never answered by him, though, but she keeps trying. Scarpa also came up with Dickie Duck, the granddaughter of Glittering Goldie and Calderkoot, a nephew of Grandma Duck. Italian artist Corrado Mastantuono created Bum Bum Gigno, a cynical, grumpy and not too good looking duck who teams up with Donald and Yero a lot. The American artist William Van Horn also introduced a new character, Rumpus McFowl, an old and rather corpulent duck with a giant appetite and laziness, who is first said to be a cousin of Scrooge. Only later, Scrooge reveals to his nephews Rumpus is actually his half-brother. Later, Rumpus also finds out. Working for the Danish editor Egmont, artist Daniel Branca and scriptwriters Paul Hollas and Charlie Martin created Sonny Seagull, an orphan who befriends Huey, Dewey and Louie, and his rival, Mr. Phelps. One of the most productive duck artists used to be Victor Ariagata Rios, better known under the name Vicar. He had his own studio where he and his assistants drew the story sent in by Egmont. With writer, editors Stefan and UNN Prince Paulson, Vicar created the character Una, a prehistoric duck princess who traveled to modern Duckburg by using Euro's time machine. She stayed and is still seen in occasional modern stories. The best-known duck artist of this time is American Don Rosa. He started doing Disney comics in 1987 for the American publisher Gladstone. He later worked briefly for the Dutch editors but moved to work directly for Egmont soon afterwards. His stories contain many direct references to stories by Karl Barks, and he also wrote and illustrated a 12-part series of stories about the life of Scrooge McDuck, which won him two Eisner Awards. Other important artists who have worked with Donald are Freddie Milton and Don Gipps, who made 1810 pagers which experts claim, were very difficult to separate from Barks' own work from the late 1940s. Japanese artist Shiro Amano worked with Donald on the graphic novel Kingdom Hearts based on the Disney Square Enix video game. Nordic countries Donald Duck is known in Nordic countries as Kale Anka in Sweden, Andersen in Denmark, Andresand in Iceland, Donald Duck in Norway, and Aku Anka in Finland. In the mid-1930s, Robert S. Hartmann, a German who served as a representative of Walt Disney, visited Sweden to supervise the merchandise distribution of Sagakonst. Hartmann found a studio called Latelet Decorator, which produced illustrated cards that were published by Sagakonst. Since the Disney characters on the cards appeared to be exactly, on model, Hartman asked the studio to create a local version of the English-language Mickey Mouse Weekly. In 1937 Latelet Decorator began publishing Mus Pig Tittenningen, which had high production values and spanned 23 issues. Most of the magazine's content came from local producers, while some material consisted of reprints from Mickey Mouse Weekly. The comic anthology ended in 1938. Hartman helped Disney establish offices in all Nordic countries before he left Disney in 1941. Donald became the most successful of the Disney characters in the Nordic countries, and Nordic peoples recognize him better than Mickey Mouse. Kale Anka and Sea Shocked Face, Donald's first dedicated Swedish anthology, started in September 1948. In 2001 the Finnish post office issued a stamp set to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Donald's presence in Finland. By 2005 around one out of every four Norwegians read the Norwegian edition Donald Duck & Co. per week, translating to around 1.3 million regular readers. During the same year, every week 434,000 Swedes read Kale Anka and Co. By 2005 in Finland the Donald Duck anthology Aku Anka sold 270,000 copies per issue. Tim Pilcher and Brad Books, authors of The Essential Guide to World Comics, described the Donald anthologies as the Scandinavian equivalent of the UK's Beano or Dandy, a comic that generations have grown up with, from grandparents to grandchildren. Hanu Radila, an author, says that Finnish people recognize an aspect of themselves in Donald. Radila cites that Donald attempts to retrieve himself from, all manner of unexpected and unreasonable scrapes using only his wits and the slim resources he can put his hands on, all of which meshes nicely with the popular image of Finland as driftwood in the crosscurrents of world politics. Finnish voters placing protest votes typically write, Donald Duck, as the candidate. In Sweden voters often voted for Donald Duck or the Donald Duck Party as a non-existent candidate until a 2006 change in voting laws, which prohibited voting for non-existent candidates. In a 20-year span, Donald won enough votes to be, in theory, Sweden's ninth most popular political organization. In 1985, Donald received 291 votes in an election for the Parliament of Sweden. By 1978, within Finland, there was a debate over the morality of Donald Duck. 
Madi Halapainen jokingly criticized Donald for living with Daisy while not being married to her, for not wearing trousers, and for, in the words of the Library Journal, being too bourgeois. Some observers from Finland from the same time period supported Donald, referring to him as a genuine proletarian, forced to sell his labor at slave rates to make a living. The Library Journal said it was revealed that, since 1950, Donald had secretly been married to Daisy. An annual Christmas special in Norway, Denmark, Finland and Sweden is from all of us to all of you, in Norway and Sweden with a title of Donald Duck and his friends celebrate Christmas. Segments include Ferdinand the Bull, a short with Chip, and Dale, a segment from Lady and the Tramp, a sneak preview of a coming Disney movie and concludes with Jiminy Cricket performing, When You Wish Upon a Star. To many people watching this special is a tradition as important as having a Christmas tree. Germany Donald Duck themed comics sell an average of 250,000 copies each week in Germany, Mostly published in the kids' weekly Mickey Mouse and the monthly's Donald Duck special and Lustige's Taschenbeck. The Wall Street Journal called Donald Duck, the Jerry Lewis of Germany, a reference to American star Jerry Lewis' popularity in France. Donald's dialogue in German comics tends to be more sophisticated and philosophical. He quotes from German literature, speaks in grammatically complex sentences and is prone to philosophical musings, while the stories often take a more political tone than their American counterparts. Features especially associated with Erika Fuchs's German translations of the comics created by the good duck artist Karl Barks. Christian Feiler, former president of DONALD, a German acronym which stands for German Organization for Noncommercial Followers of Pure Donaldism, says Donald is appreciated in Germany because almost everyone can identify with him. He has strengths and weaknesses, he lacks polish but is also very cultured and well read. It is through this everyman persona that Donald is able to voice philosophical truths about German society that appeal to both children and adults. Donald's writers and illustrators Karl Barks, Don Rosa and Ub Iwerks are well known in Germany and have their own fan clubs. Italy and Italy, new stories about Donald Duck and Scrooge McDuck are hosted in the kids' weekly Topolino and the monthly Paperino. While Paperino is written by many authors, he still maintains several characteristics. He is mostly an everyman, but the fierce, harsh temper he has in the American comic appears to be diluted into a meek, weaker personality, prone to comical fits of rage that are mostly subdued by the realization of its impotence. His frustration at Gladstone's luck is comically enhanced. In the Italian comics, Donald is chronically unlucky, unable to do or get anything right, with Gladstone taking advantage of his superiority or taking genuine pity of his unlucky cousin and trying several plans to grant him some better luck, always failing. However, the constant search for an outlet to vent his frustration led the Italian rendition of Donald Duck to seek his catharsis in several ways. In the 60s, vexed by Scrooge's antics and Gladstone's luck, he reinvented himself as Paperinic, the Duck Avenger, an anti-hero at first, a self-assured, well-adjusted, brilliant hero in later stories, no longer bound by the self-doubt and the mockery Donald is constantly subjected. Duck Avenger is referred to the character Derelic performed by Johnny Dorelli in the Anglo-Italian movie Arriva Derelic. Further along the years, he fashioned for himself the additional identities of QQ7, a bumbling secret agent protecting Scrooge's riches and Double Duck, a more confident and suave secret agent, in the mold of James Bond, a more equilibrate mold of the heroic Duck Avenger and the tricky QQ7, often accompanied by the beautiful spy KK. Donald's secret identities are hosted in the main Topolino comics, but also in several themed comics, like the now-defunct Paperinic, PKNA, PK Squared and the current Paperinic app grade, the latter hosting reprints and new stories as well. Having several full lives to live does not hamper Donald's ability to live adventures on his own. He still lives adventures with his uncle Scrooge and his nephews, and he lived a star-crossed love story with a princess from another planet, Reginella. Despite Reginella leaving a deep trace in Donald's heart, he is still depicted as extremely faithful to Daisy, with a small hiccup deriving by Daisy Duck having a secret identity on her own, with Papernick and Papernika, both unaware of their secret identities, cultivating a permanent status of belligerent tension. He also keeps a cheerful rivalry with his neighbor Bum Bum Gigno, more a bumbler and a nuisance than he is, but still a good person at heart. The Italian rendition of Donald Duck seldom, if ever, goes by his first name, having everyone, including his nephews, Daisy and Uncle Scrooge, address him as Paperino. He also appears in the Topolino comics depicting his childhood, called Paperino Paperotto, which were first produced in Italy in 1998. He lives in the fictional town, Quacktown with Grandma Duck and Billy Goat. Disney theme parks Donald Duck has played a major role in many Disney theme parks over the years. He has actually been seen in more attractions and shows at the parks than Mickey Mouse has. He has appeared over the years in such attractions as Animagic, Mickey Mouse Review, Mickey's Philharmagic, Disneyland, The First Fifty Magical Years, Grand Fiesta Tour starring the Three Caballeros and the updated version of It's a Small World. He also is seen in the parks as a meet-and-greet character.